Six Riddles That Only 2% Extraordinary Thinkers Can Solve When we find ourselves in unexpected situations, it's hard to know what to do right off the bat. Do you think you can get yourself out of any challenge possible, no matter how strange it might be? This guy certainly knows what it takes. His name is Charles, and he's quite an extraordinary individual. He's overcome tons of obstacles and pulled through a lot of difficult situations throughout his life. Do you have the same sharp wits as our friend Charles here? Let's see. Riddle number one. Charles was an exceptionally bright kid, but for some reason, his teachers always assigned him the most impossible tasks in school. Perhaps they wanted to nurture his intellect, or maybe he just wasn't their favorite student. Anyway, here's one of the brain busters that they gave him. Can you correct this flawed equation without changing the numbers or their position in the equation? You have 15 seconds to do it. Have you already figured out the answer? It's way easier than you think. Just flip the chalkboard upside down and voila, all the numbers add up. Way to think outside the box, right? Er, outside the board? I don't know. Riddle number two. As a teen, Charles always loved hiking in the woods by himself. One day on one of these hikes, he accidentally fell down a 100 foot deep well. To get out of this watery trap, he climbed 10 feet every single day. But while he was sleeping at night, he slid back down 6 feet. Charles eventually made it out of that well. The question is, how many days did it take him to pull off such a feat? Time's ticking. It took Charles 24 days to get out of the well. Don't worry, he had a backpack with some food and drinks, so hunger wasn't an issue. He gained 10 feet a day, but by the morning of the next day, he had lost 6. On the morning of the 24th day, he was 96 feet up. With just 4 more feet to climb on day 24, he easily made it out before the sun went down. Ow! My brain! Riddle number three. When Charles was 20, his friends decided to prank him. They kidnapped him, stripped his clothes off, and left him in a room with no windows, a solid concrete floor, and a locked door. Sheesh, is this a prank or a crime? Anyway, on one of the walls, Charles found a note that said in order to escape, he needed to get the ping pong ball. Okay, cryptic. The problem was that the ping pong ball was lying at the bottom of a three-foot pipe sticking out of the floor in the middle of the room. His arms couldn't reach the bottom of the pipe, and there were no objects around that he could use either. Yet, our brainy friend still managed to complete the task. How did he do it? You have some time to think things through. Well, that was a tough one, wasn't it? With limited options, Charles cleverly decided to pee into the pipe. That way, the ball would float up enough for him to reach in and grab it. I just hope he washed his hands after that. Riddle number four. With intelligence like his, Charles became a successful and wealthy man. But there was still something missing in his life, and that something ended up being true love. But he met his soulmate, a woman named Irene, and the lovebirds soon got married. Unfortunately, it turns out that Irene was a conniving gold digger. She decided to try and poison her husband in order to get all his riches. Charles knew about her scheme, so he only ate the same food that she did. One day, she offered him an apple, but he said he'd only eat it if she cut it down the middle and split it with him. So, she did. 
but Charles shortly afterwards dropped to the ground while Irene stood there perfectly healthy. Fortunately, Charles survived, and Irene was arrested and sent to prison for this murderous attempt. So that begs the question, how could she poison her husband when she ate the same exact apple and didn't take any sort of antidote beforehand? Your 15 seconds starts now. Like we said, Charles knew his wife was trying to poison him, so he'd been taking a universal antidote every morning. This poison, though, turned out to be extremely strong, and that's why he just ended up in a deep sleep. And when it comes to Irene, she simply poisoned one side of the knife, so while she was cutting the apple, the poison from the knife ended up on Charles's half and not hers. Now that's a femme fatale. Riddle number five. Charles made his fortune as a famous chemist and pharmacist. He even created a cure for one of the most fatal diseases out there. His co-workers, Alex, Nicola, Michael, and James, all envied his talent and success, and each one was ready to kill him in order to steal the formula for this revolutionary cure. Poor guy, everyone wants to waste him. One evening, as Charles was finishing up some work in the lab, one of his colleagues walked in and stabbed him in the stomach. Charles recognized the person and knew he had to leave a hint for the police in case he didn't survive. So he quickly grabbed a piece of paper and wrote down the numbers 28, 27, 57. Shortly afterwards, he passed out from blood loss and probably would have died if one of the security guards had not found him and called an ambulance. Charles managed to survive, but as fate would have it, he had hit his head pretty hard on the floor when he fell unconscious. The blow put Charles in a coma so the police only had his note to help them find out who had tried to kill him. Obviously, the suspects were the four co-workers since they were all in the lab that day and each one had a motive. So, which one was it? Alex, Nicola, Michael, or James? Let's put 15 seconds on the clock. The thing you have to remember is that Charles was an esteemed chemist. The numbers that he wrote down to help police come from the periodic table of elements. Number 28 is nickel, which gives you Ni. Number 27 is cobalt, abbreviated as CO. And finally, the 57th element is lanthanum, which is LA. Put them together and you get the name of Charles's attacker, Nicola. Riddle number six. Charles wasn't just a genius. He was like something straight out of an action movie because he managed to cheat death yet again and woke up from his coma after the trial. Eventually, he grew old, retired, and decided to spend the rest of his life in a cozy little cottage outside the city. Charles never left his house. He got his letters from the mailman, his groceries were delivered to him by another guy, and a different man brought him his daily newspaper. One Friday, the mailman came to give Charles his letters and found him dead in his kitchen. He immediately called 911. The investigators could tell from the get-go that this was a murder, so they carefully examined the crime scene. They found a couple bottles of milk, a loaf of bread, some pills, keys, and Tuesday's newspaper on the table. The only people that had contact with Charles were the mailman, the food delivery guy, and the newspaper deliverer. So, they soon became the primary suspects. Do you know who killed poor Charles? Get to thinking, detective! It was the newspaper delivery guy that took Charles's life. Maybe you caught the fact that only Tuesday's newspaper was lying on the table. The newspaper guy didn't bother bringing Wednesday's or Thursday's paper because he knew Charles was dead. And that's because he killed him. Poor Charles. Poor, poor Charles. The guy lived a heck of a life, wouldn't you say? How many of these challenges did you manage to crack? 
Tell us in the comments section below. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family to find out how many of these riddles they'll be able to solve. Stay on the bright side of life and we'll see you soon.